Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back to my channel. I'm doing something a bit different today. I thought since I've been planning to kind of go through my language textbook shelves, I would do a little tour at the same time. So as you may be able to see, it has become a bit of a mess. Um, and yes, I have too many textbooks um, because I bought them and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be using them really soon. And I haven't because I'm really behind <laughs> and honestly it's always like give me anxiety because this shelf is right behind my desk my desk is literally right here and it feels like it's been like looming over me and I don't like that it's not a nice feeling <laughs> so I decided I'm going to clear off a load of books that I'm not using yet and put them in my cupboard to kind of free up some space first of all and stop the feeling of impending doom so ignore the mess on top, we're not dealing with that today. We're just going to be focusing on the textbooks. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure how this uh, situation is going to pan out because I haven't really planned how to film this. But we're just going to go ahead and start going through some textbooks. So these are my Japanese books. These are mostly textbooks. These are notebooks, mainly. Um, some Chinese up there. So I'm going to start off by removing the Chinese books. These are my HSK2 books, which I will be using, but they will belong on the Chinese shelf. So this one, let's start off with this one. This is relatively new. It's like a JLPT study guide. So it gives you some different questions and kind of guidance on how to answer the questions, some information about the JLPT exam. Uh, it goes from N4 to N1. So yeah, I got this. It was like nine pounds or something from JP Books and I was ordering some of the books anyway so I was like nine pounds might as well go for it so yeah we'll definitely be working through this one um but there's no room to put it on my shelf so I'm going to put it to the side for the moment right so we have a uh, survival Tagalog and pocket Vietnamese dictionary I am not currently actively learning either of these languages so they will be going into the cupboard and this one I like these books I'm pretty sure I've talked about these books before I also have it for Chinese it is for Korean people learning Japanese. It is a little vocab book. It's very cute. It gives you little pictures and then the translations, obviously, because this is the Japanese one. It's got it in Korean and Japanese. Uh, they do have it for English as well, for like Korean and English. So if that's more your thing. Uh, it's on two choice. I will be keeping this one on my shelf for the time being. Right, so we have all the Naru Goto tech books, workbooks. So I have A1, A2, 1, A2, 2, and then A2, B1. So I'm currently working through these. Uh, I'm on, at the time of filming, I'm currently on A2, 1. So these will be staying on my shelf. Then we have an integrated approach to intermediate Japanese. I did start this one uh, I feel like if I kind of went through it, I would kind of pick up bits here and there. But yeah, since I went back to review, I've not really been using this one. I only did the first uh, chapter, I think. I do like this textbook. I really like this textbook. Um, and it's one I'm planning on going back through this summer. So this will be staying on the shelf. This is just my printouts from the Udemy N4 course. So I printed it all out, bound it, uh, and just went through that. I don't think I'll throw this away yet, but I won't leave it on my shelf. I think this one will go in the cupboard. Right, then we have a couple of these practice books. So this is the um, N4 drill book. I haven't even done all of it. I will try and go through this one and finish it off just to make sure that I'm up to scratch, up to level. Then there's this little one. I feel like this one's really popular, everyone has this little textbook. I have done all the questions, but what I started doing was going through and translating the sentences from the questions. So that has been quite useful. Next we have this little N3 vocab book. Uh, it's one of the ones with the red film, so you can like hide the words. I did start going through this one, like beginning of last year I got up to word number 70. I think I will keep this on my shelf because I think 
once I'm kind once I start on N3 again, I will be focusing on vocab. So I'll leave this on my shelf. Then we have the Saw Macrame series. So I have uh, vocabulary, grammar, reading and listening. So I have all four of those. I don't have the kanji one because I have another kanji series that I use, which we'll get to later. Um, yeah, for the time being, I'm not using these. Uh, maybe I'll start them later this summer, but for the time being, they're in the cupboard. Then we have the Kanzen Master Books. Uh, I've got grammar and vocabulary. Me, I did start going through them. I think I did like the first few. Yeah, I did like the first few um, lessons. Did I go through the vocab? I'm not sure if I went through the vocabulary one. Oh no, I have highlighted. But I did start going through the vocabulary one, but obviously didn't make it very far. I'm using the wrong coloured highlighters, so that's how old this is. <laughs> um, kanji, kanji master. I have N3, N2, and M1. I'll probably keep these on there for the time being. Because again, I feel like when I start on N3 again, I'll focus more on vocabulary and kanji before then studying grammar. Then I have try N3. I haven't used this book before, um, like this series. I have ordered the N4 one that I plan to go through as revision. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm not on N3 yet, so this can go in the cupboard. Again, I've got another drill question book for N3, so this can go in the cupboard. And then some more practice exams. I know I have like a whole ton of N3 stuff. That's because after I passed the N4 exam, I bought a load of the N3 books. And then I kind of didn't study for ages, I was in such like a slump for studying, I just didn't want to study Japanese. So I kind of forgot a lot, which is why I'm going back and working through reviewing things now, and it's been like a year, and I just haven't gotten through everything yet that I want to, and I don't want to start in 3 yet because I'm not going to know what's going on. So yeah, I have a load of N3 books, but I haven't used them yet, and that's why. <laughs> I know I have a problem with buying textbooks, by the way, you don't need to comment like, why do you have so many textbooks? Like, I know, I know I have textbooks, that's why I'm doing this, because I've got too many. Also when people ask me how I afford textbooks, like I do work, I have a job, and I have a business. So like I do have money coming in, it's not like... I don't know what people think, but I make money, so I spend money on textbooks. <laughs> Another little N3. Into a cupboard. See how much clearer this is already? This one, we had to get this one for uni. Um, I do actually quite like this book, I did go through a few of the uh, passages. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I'll probably go through this again at some point. Uh, just not now. So this one can go into the cupboard. So I have Japanese stories for language learners. This one will be staying, obviously. I love that book. And then we have Let's Read Japanese. I'll probably keep all of these out just because like they're not very big. Um, so yeah, I have level 1, volume 1, level 2, volume 1, level 2, volume 2, and level 3, volume 1. So, I mean, yeah, I'll probably just keep these all on here for now. So I have my little pocket or mini dictionary, Oxford Japanese mini dictionary. Always useful to have a little dictionary, that one can go there. And then, right, so I bought this one when I was in London over New Year's. I just thought intermediate and thought great, probably N3. Um, it wasn't until I got home and I posted a picture on Instagram and someone said, oh, N2. I was like, oh crap, yeah, it's N2. So this one can go in the cupboard for the time being. Uh, I've got the N5 and N4 one and then the N3 one. I got this one because uh, I didn't, well, I got rid of a load of my N4 books, which was probably a mistake in hindsight, but at the time I didn't need them, so I sold them on. Uh, this is just for review, I'm going to go through, I have started going through it actually, but I'll go through and like tick off the words I know. Um, and then any words that I don't know, I will stick into a Quizlet uh, set with flashcards. Again, this is one of the ones where you cover with the red film. Um, and then obviously N3 when I get there. So then we have Essential Japanese Grammar. I'll probably keep this one out because it's just a really helpful like reference. I did start going through um, and like working through the ones that I thought I could probably 
use in daily conversation. I didn't get very far, I only did a few of them, but it is a useful little reference, so I'll keep this on the shelf. Then we have new Penguin Parallel Text short stories. Uh, this one is pretty intense, so I might actually put this one in the cupboard for the time being, just because I can't see myself using it anytime soon. But yeah, I think it is a good little reading book. What I'll probably do is, you know, cover the translations, read the Japanese, see how much I understand. Uh, I would also be interested in getting this book for the other languages as well. I think they have Chinese, I'm not sure if they have Korean, but yeah. Uh, right, this one. I think I got this one from Daria. I think Daria sold me this on Instagram. It's just like reading. A little storybook, I guess. Um, yeah, haven't used it since I got it. Probably won't use it anytime soon. So, for the time being, it's going in the cupboard. This feels so much better already, like, I feel liberated. Little Kiki's Delivery Service book. I got this as a gift a while ago. I have not read it yet. It's got cute pictures though. Um, I might keep this out just because I like it, it's a cute little book. Same with Lapita. I got this um, in foils. This was like the cheapest one they had. Some of them were like £20. This one was eleven twenty, so I got it. So yeah, it's all in... Oh, I think I've got nail varnish in it. So yeah, it's all in Japanese. There are some pictures. But it's not like a picture book. It's got some pictures in the middle like the planes and stuff yeah it looks like a really cute little book uh castle in the sky is one of my favorite ghibli films so i got that when i was in london one time japanese kanji fast finder again another really useful reference book so i will keep that on the shelf for the time being shadowing japanese this is intermediate to advanced i have ordered the um beginner to intermediate one so i'll put this one in the cupboard because until I go through the beginner one, I'm not going to be using this one. I won't bore you with all of my notebooks, but I do just want to share my little Koya notebook. I think it's so cute. Okay, so now that I have space, I can put these ones on here. Next, well, hey, we've got a uh, Korean. So again, I've got two shelves full for Korean. Yeah, let's just, let's first of all, move all the Chinese books off the shelf. You can see my Chinese shelf down here. I didn't have space for everything in there, so that's why everything is kind of just on top. Uh, I do have the uh, beginners uh, Korean grammar in use on my desk. I was studying with that this morning. Um, I'm sure you all know Korean grammar in use. Very good textbook. I think most people studying Korean use this book at one point or another. As well as you can like see where all my books are <laughs> just spilling. Anyway, uh, we have a mini Korean dictionary. Again, I love these little, like, little mini dictionaries. They're so cute. I love it. But there's no space for it at the moment, so we're gonna put that at its side. Uh, I'll get to that later. Right, essential Korean grammar. I've spoken about this before. I did tab all of the grammar structures because I was bored one day and I thought that felt productive even though I didn't want to study. So yeah, it just gives you grammar points and then it gives you a star rating for how important it is. Very similar to how the um, vocabulary book is laid out by topic. And then it gives it an importance rating. So obviously I'll be keeping those. They're very good um, for reference. And Essential Korean Vocabulary is the main book I'm using at the moment for vocab. And then we have 500 Basic Korean Verbs. Very, very useful um, as a reference. I still struggle with Korean conjugations. Some of them just confuse the hell out of me. So having that uh, really does help. Quick Korean level one printouts. So I don't think I've finished this, but um, basically, uh, which university is it? Cyber University of Korea has like a free online Korean course, um, which is where this is from did start it, never finished it, I printed it out and I even made it a nice cover with a little galaxy cat sticker um, maybe I'll go back and finish this one day but for now uh, this little book can go in the cupboard then we get on to these books I think the English title is fun and fast Korean 
Um, they are nice books. I kind of wish I did go through them, but I feel like if I went through them now, I'd just be wasting time. I don't think I would really be learning anything new other than kind of testing my Japanese. I did ask my boyfriend if he wanted them and he wasn't super keen, but he has told me he wants to learn Korean, so I'll probably hang on to them, but put them in the cupboard. Right, then we have the Vitamin Korean series. So yeah, these are the main books I've been using. I haven't written in these ones. Yeah, I really like these books a lot. From level three, everything's in Korean and it's a bit boring. They kind of take the pictures out um, for the most part, but I mean, all the information's still there. I've started on the first chapter, but obviously I haven't got very far. Um, and number four, obviously I've started on number three, but I'm not sure. I might keep number four on here for now. If I start running out of space on the shelf, I'll take it off and put it in the cupboard. But for the time being. And then we have the Sorgang books. So I've got 3A and 3B. Um, so there's like the main textbook. And then the student's book, which has like translations and explanations and things. Now, I feel like these would be really good books if you had a tutor or even just a friend that you were studying with. But I felt like studying on my own, I just didn't get on with these books. So I will sell these um, when the world isn't in lockdown. <laughs> so yeah, I've got 3A and 3B. For now, they'll go in the cupboard. And then we have Continuing Korean. I did have um, the, uh, was it elementary? Elementary Korean was the first one. Yeah, I'm not using this at the moment. I'm trying to focus more on one or two resources. So my main focus, well, my main textbook is the Vitamin Korean series. And then I'm also using Korean Grammar in Use and the Essential Korean Vocabulary. So I'm not sure if I'll ever kind of really go through it. I might flick through and if there's anything in particular that I want to revise but I can't see myself like working through this book from beginning to end just because I have other textbooks but yeah for now I'll put it in the cupboard and then okay right so this book is kind of just on its own it's a little reading book it's like learn learn Korean through reading or through stories obviously I love reading through uh, I love learning through stories I talk about it all the time um this is for, I think this is more for intermediate learners though. So I don't feel like my level is really up to scratch to make the most out of this book. So it's going in the cupboard. And the same with these ones. These are all part of the same series, hence why they all look the same. There's one for history, um, folk tales, fairy tales. I don't remember what the titles are off the top of my head. Um, yeah, they're like really nice books to work through. All the pages are colourful, they've got questions and things and explanations for the grammar in the story. So I will definitely work through these. I got, I think I got the first one like two or three years ago with every intention of having used it already. Um, but I've just not got around to using it yet because my level is not where I think it should be to make the most out of these books. Because if I'm having to look up everything it's just not going to be worth it, it's going to be so time consuming, so I'd rather get my level to a more intermediate um, level before going through here so I can actually understand what they're not actively teaching me, if that makes sense. Anyway, into the cupboard. Then this one is all about um, Korean language and Korean culture. So it gives you like different situations um, and like there's different dialogues for that situation and grammar po no, grammar points, culture points. Actually, um, on the website it said something about like it, this book was for women that married Korean men and moved to Korea or something and I was like right that's very specific but I bought it anyway because it looked nice. Um, so yeah again because it, it's all in Korean so I feel like it would be better if I can kind of get to a more intermediate stage before going through this to make the most out of it. So for now, going in the cupboard. <laughs> then we have some topic books. These are all for the uh, topic one test. I did start going through one of them. Um, I'll leave these on the shelf. And then if I shuffle back, we've got most of these are notebooks. 
I will just pull this one off. Easy Korean reading for beginners. I'm still working through this one. I've got a few stories left, but obviously that will go on the shelf for now. Okay, then we have Korean vocabulary practice for foreigners. Uh, it's just like loads of words and then practice questions. I don't know if you can even, can you even see that? There we go, that's a bit better. So yeah, I'll be keeping that because I'm going to try and work through that one this summer. Then we have 2000 essential Korean words for beginners. Um, so more of the same. Gives you vocabulary. And then there's some practice questions in there. So I'll keep the beginners one. The intermediate one can go in the cupboard. Korean speaking. I really like these books, but again, they're kind of a bit above my level at the moment. I wouldn't bother getting the um, beginners one at this point. Also something interesting. One of these is in English and one of them is in Korean, but they are exactly the same on the inside. Like both of them have English explanations. So why one is Korean on the cover and one is English? I don't know. But anyway, they're both going in the cupboard. Then we have real life Korean conversations for beginners. I haven't really used this book all that much. I've done a few of the chapters um, and I did get the intermediate one, but I think for the time being, I'm going to put them in the cupboard just because I've not really been using either of them and I'm not at the intermediate one yet. So yeah, same for these two for Korean Q&A sentence patterns and everyday Korean idiomatic expressions. They both look like very useful books, but I don't think uh, my level is quite there yet. So these two will go in the cupboard for the time being. Korean culture in 100 key words. I love this little book. It's got passages in Korean and then it gives you like the vocabulary and the translation. So not only are you learning new words and testing your Korean knowledge, you're also learning about Korean culture. 10 out of 10 would recommend this book. It's also got um, different levels, so it's not just beginners. It has stories for beginners, for intermediate learners, and for advanced learners. Again, they're all indicated by little asterisks. They give them little star ratings for the level, so that's staying. Then Korean stories for language learners, staying, obviously. And then we just have these two, which are like children's storybooks. Um, it is part of a series, so I've got one and two. Uh, I haven't read them yet. <laughs> I think for now I will put them in the cover just for the sake of saving space. So here we go. We're on the Chinese level. Um, I do have this one, but I got it from Amazon and it wasn't in good condition. And even after I cleaned it up, um, the seller was not very um, good. <laughs> so I'm going to return this one. Korean picture dictionary. I can put this one up here. Right, so here's the Chinese um, version of that vocab book. So it's exactly the same on the inside, but words are in Chinese rather than Japanese. So I will be keeping that one. Uh, learn Chinese with me. I think I bought this one from Daria as well. Yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I have flipped through this one a little bit. I haven't used it. Uh, at this point, I don't know if I will, I'm focusing more on the HSK textbooks and Discover China, so I'll probably sell this one on. Um, yeah, for now I'll put it in the cupboard. There is no comfy way to sit on the floor. Alright, Chinese for beginners. I did go through it a little bit, I did start revising it again. Where did I get it to? I didn't get very far with it to be honest. I would like to go through this one, um, pick up with this one again. I feel like especially now I have more of an understanding of um, basic Chinese. I feel like this one would definitely help a lot more. I think for the time being I'm going to put this one in the cupboard and I'll come back to it at a later date. Okay, then we have New Practical Chinese Reader. Again, I've kind of flipped through it. I've used the dialogues because um, this is the one that my teacher uses. Um, kind of bases her lessons around, but we don't follow this textbook in class. So, yeah, I haven't used it, used it, other than the dialogues. So I might sell this one on, but for now I'm just going to put it in the cupboard so it's out of the way. Then, obviously, we have the HSK1 textbook and workbook. So I can put this 
here and then I can get HSK2 books that we put up here Ooh, earlier we can put these on the shelves yay then we have Discover China student book one I do like these books I like books with colour in them I like that it's kind of um, it doesn't like give you the information you kind of have to figure it out for yourself almost um, there's a lot of like different kinds of exercises and things to kind of make sure that you're understanding so I do like this book but I wouldn't recommend it for someone that doesn't know anything about Chinese I'm using this more as a review after I've gone through the HSK books so I would recommend it if you use it alongside another resource then we have Learning Mandarin Chinese Characters Volume 1 and 2 again these are really good books um, they just test not test you they give you all the characters and it gives you lots of writing practice what I do like wait if I find one is that it teaches you the um, simplified characters but then it will also give you if there is a traditional character it will give you the traditional character down the bottom as well um, I haven't finished volume one yet but I'm working my way through it I've got those um, character flashcards I'm going to go through put all these onto flashcards and then we have these ones I think these are for children <laughs> lots of colours for learning the um, characters very cute I would like to hold on to them but for now I'm going to stick them in the cupboard and then we have HSK1 storybook and Chinese short stories for beginners I'll keep those both on the shelf for the time being this is my um, folder for when we had lessons obviously lessons aren't going on at the moment but I've got like the handouts this is a like um, practice book my notebook for notes and then I keep this little one as like a reference so I've just written out all the characters that we learned with the readings yeah I'll keep that on the shelf oh. probably take these off the top then we have uh, Mandarin Chinese Vocabulary Builder I borrowed this from the library I haven't gone through it yet uh, I probably won't, I'm not a big fan of Michelle Thomas CDs I might put it on at some point to see how I like it but for now I'm going to take it off my shelf Then these are notebooks that aren't even for Chinese I've got my Spanish books Yeah, I'm going to take my Spanish books off because I'm not learning Spanish at the moment I will get to Spanish at some point I just have the dictionary, sh uh, short stories in Spanish and easy learning complete Spanish which Honestly, I'm not enjoying that much. I don't like this book that much. I don't like the grammar one anyway. I kind of wish I just bought the vocab and verb books separately and not bothered with the grammar one, honestly. But it is what it is. Um, let's see. Then we've got... Move that out of the way. HSK uh, vocab. Tuck that one in there. Uh, the practice test books and then I can actually pop these up like that there we go that's all of my language books <laughs> if there's any books you'd like to see in more detail let me know in the comments I'll do a video review at some point I hope this uh, wasn't too boring for you all. I hope you could find some use out of uh, the books. I'm not going to be linking to all of these books down below. That would take me forever. But I will put my um, Amazon storefront link in the description. Uh, a fair few of these will be listed on there. So if you want to have a look, knock yourselves out. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>